there is digital device and uh, these are even uh, said to be called as hybrid systems there are in number of keywords that are defined for it <clears throat> so uh, we had learned plenty number of lessons from the covid 19 before that, still we were using all these keywords which I pronounced just before. <clears throat> Hybrid systems, smart systems, and uh, the other systems, whatever it came for their usage, easy to use, uh, plug and play. There are n number of keywords there were used, and they were uh, used to attract people. Even now, we are running behind modern word. Any cases? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Since we have started sleeping with AI, we have started uh, snoring with WhatsApp and then skipping our dinner, breakfast, and lunch, even being together in the family. Right? We have all forgotten. We have to now message dinner is ready, all come to the table. <laughs> so that is the era that we are looking into. So, in that point of view, as we are sincerely focusing on, on the education part, because Right from beginning, we are talking or we are thinking in our country's perspective, literacy rate has to be increased. The literacy rate of a country is not increased. Then, even though we are economically higher, we cannot say that we are rich. So that is the era that as a teachers, you also know, and as a teacher trainers, we also proactivate, saying that we all should focus on the quality of education. So when we talk about uh, quality of education, we need to... Uh, give a quality of the content that we teach. Everyday upgradation is a compulsory component. Even though we speak plenty of numbers and quality of education, if we keenly observe as a teacher, as a social, I think three different words here. Parent can be always a teacher because most of the places a parent, after he goes from his office, becomes a teacher. As if he is a mother or a father or even a guardian. But a teacher, when he leaves the school, still behaves as a teacher even in his house. So that's why even during fights, the wives used to stay. Keep your shoes outside. Whatever designation you are, you keep it there. Come inside as my husband or my uh, father of a child. So that is... So in that point, if I would like to stress you with this point. Quality. When we talk about quality, how much of the time that are we using really to provocate a small child who is not able to understand a concept? And there may be a, I used to use this word. Even you teach, even referring MIT, content leke aap kud aapko bachche ka padha ne shuru karenge, he will say that aap jo padha raho galat hai, jo mera teacher padha raho hi achcha. Because the holy book is the teacher. Now, this line you keep in your mind and say me, as a teacher, how much time are you spending for a group of people? Normally, as a teacher, when I say a teacher, all the teachers are doing a wonderful job. But still, we are not able to quench the thirst of the poor people. I'm not talking about a child who is studying in a big school in an urban area. I'm talking about a school or a child where Still, power supply is a boon. Still, internet is a boon. There are few states. And I suppose uh, certain teachers who are all well versed of these scenarios have done something potential for their uh, kids in their particular zone and even been awarded by the ICT, National ICT Awards, which are also given to certain teachers. So these are some of the appreciations from the government side that has been given to all of us. But still, Plenty number of other teachers work is also not identified by many people. So today what we want is to broadcast ourselves. We are not recognized by our own family members at certain stages. So what content are we doing? Second question comes, how much time in a day are, am I spending for the development of a content? Five minutes? Ten minutes? No. We read newspapers. We listen to newspapers. We are getting messages through WhatsApp. How much of the content that we are getting 
are not plagiarized. 67% of the data that we hear through WhatsApp is fake. Still, we live in the world of WhatsApp. We read WhatsApp. For example, recently there was one data analyst done by a person in one of the bridge, the bridge that used to connect two cities or two places, I don't know, in India only. The person got angry over the Google. What he did is that he collected 15 to 20 mobile phones and put it in a small trolley and he carried away throughout the bridge. Making sure that all the 15, 20 mobiles location is switched on. What happened? Exactly. Instantaneously, everybody was using the Google. Everybody thought that that route is very highly red in color. We do, should not mess up. So are we not bluffed up with the content? At this age, if you are able to understand what Google is doing and what content are we learning, we should be careful about preaching this to, to the student who is learning directly from the social networking. <clears throat> is it a valid point that we have to look into? When the workshop, when the uh, master trainings are being happening, we should keenly, keenly highlight these points and we have to see to that we are hundred percent concentrating on the content that we are going to develop. When I say content development, it's not easy for us. Everybody knows that writing a textbook is very tough job. We should have more collection of information. We should then arrange it. We should then compile it with all the references. Then we should have time to read and paraphrase. And we should also find out, we find out some of the key information, not the existing flown data. If you don't follow this, then the book that you are going to write is purely a trash. So similarly, when you write even a paragraph, or ask your students to write a paragraph. Today, when you instantaneously ask a student to submit an assignment, you won't believe in the rural or urban schools. They do submit the assignments through MOOCs because we are familiar with MOOCs and we are familiar with LMS. We say that submit the assignment through this Gmail ID. Within 20 minutes of the question paper given, immediately children start responding the answers. And after reading also, we also give them good gradings. Most of the schools. Are we ensuring that the child's brain is writing the paper or any chat GPT is writing the answers for you? Yeah. As a teacher, we should also provoke how this content can be revised or checked whether he has written it or not. Because this instantaneously refers or reflects in his answer sheets. If the assignment, because in one of the school, I'm not here to say the school name, in one of the school before the exam, one set of assignment sheet is given. If the child is able to attempt all the questions of the assignments properly, then he is the topper. It was proved that the child has not written the answer. Either the mother has written the answer or the father has written the answer or chat GPT has written the answer. And the child did not even have a time to go through it once before submitting it to the teacher. So in that case, I'm just highlighting what is this OER and what as a teacher, as, as a trainer, we have to concentrate upon. So many of you would have seen my slide after the seeing this slide would have caught about with this cloud burst of the word that is close to related with the objects of OER. When I talk about open, when I say open, it's already open. Open means anybody can access it. Anybody can use it. Anybody can reuse it, remix it. It's, it's only the content that we are talking about. Similarly, who are the users again? And what does they achieve from this particular OER? They are getting the knowledge. When somebody acquires the knowledge and if he is not applying it, then there is no wisdom cost to enter. Everybody knows this. Right? So O, open, E is educational, R is resources. Whenever we talk about content, we always think that we should write it. My first question was, how, many, how much time are we spending for ourselves per day? Are we able to spend at least five minutes per day, 10 minutes per day? Yes, factory of your roles, whether you're a principal, whether you're a headmaster, whether you're a teacher, first of all, forget you're a parent. Think 10 to 15 minutes for yourself. So what I, what should I do? 10 minutes, think about your next five years. I'm not talking about your finance investments. I'm not talking about your knowledge investments because the technology is taking your child ahead. Luckily, if your children are grown up, 
then you are in a different era, different zone, how to manage them. But unlikely if a child in the very young age, up to 12th standard, then you are in the warrant. You should take a very, very strict action, strict monitoring about your children. If you are not doing, you are going to be the cost makers. Please go through the ICT policies which is given by Government of India, then and there. Because the rules are very stringent. Both father and mother working somewhere, child is kept with some other under care, and whatever facilities, because you don't want the child to poke you up. Ye kaha, wo kaha. So we give them full freedom. So where are the points that we are concerned? So keep that all those in the point and coming to the concept of OER, what we are concentrating is since we don't have a time, how do we generate content for uh, three different types of children that we see in the classroom? Mostly we call the children into three categories. One is slow learner, middle level learner, and the fast learners are equaled as hybrid learners. <clears throat> so in these three contexts, hybrid will never listen to a teacher. Hybrid knows the technology more than a teacher. He wants to test whether the teacher knows the knowledge or not in front of the others. Number one. Number two, he is a balanced guy. He doesn't know, but he is interested to learn. He will find ways to learn it. But the last slow learner will never show interest that he will never learn, let others learn. He knows how to have fun. But we have to motivate them as a teacher. Apart from these three, we always forget one category, which is called as Divang children. Most of them, it is very sad to say, most of them neglect. Because we always think, because after handling 45 kids in a classroom, one or two Divang children, we face a pressure on to them. Neither he has the potential to understand, neither he has some issues to provoke him to learn. But if you make that child understand, then that is your success rate. Merely getting a CBSE result of 100%, getting two child or one child of Diva into a passing category, that is the best success of that particular school. But most of us speak like this, talk like this, but never enter because we have more pressure on the work. So we forget, we neglect. So we have to think the content that we prepare we look into should be of three categories. Either the content should follow with the Divan children, either the content has to go with the slow learners. Baki do to many explain karudia. Aap dega to bhi fayda hai, nahi dega to bhi fayda hai, nahi. But as a teacher, you can use these two first two categories to refine the content such that the next two, two categories can understand. Because we sit as a teacher, we sit as a content creator, we write some of the definitions, some of the notes for the children, we give it to the class through the class monitor. Our job is done. But we never think, I have not read the notes, 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 so we start in this flow. Have you ever thought, while giving a content to a child or in a classroom, there should be three versions. The first content should be for the hyper -good. The second is for the slow learner. The third should be for the divine children. We are not going to write anything. We are going to write only one set of copy. But when we give it to the students, you will be amazed to look into the content, the different fara faces, the various different aspect of applications the child is giving, you will be amazed. Those answers cannot be fetched by any teacher in chat. Because those are going to be Certain things will be blah blah. I think I understand. Certain kids will be hypocritical. Certain kids will be very too much talkative, irrespective of content. But there are research output that has shown that when a notes has been shared by the teacher to the creamy layer of the class, and the output given is being modulated and given whether the content is going to be the smashy one, which is going to be the best. So that is what we have to focus. I am not going to take much time because. <clears throat> So this is what I was uh, discussing about. What is the need of our, the, our, what is an OER, OER includes what, what is the specific uh, scope of OER and what is the need, components of OER, benefits of OER, what NCRT is focusing on OER 
and about the searching tools, integrations. But still, there are some challenges of using this OER among the three key players. Again, I do say whenever we talk about content, we are talking about three key players, the students, the teachers, and the parents. These are the key uh, three key players for our today's objective. Followed by the methodology behind using a content, how you are going to use a content, and what way you want your content to be given to others for further enhancement also. So those we call it as licenses. And what is Creative Commons? And further it will be there. One minute. Again, OER just confirmed. Open, open educational resources. <clears throat> My again flow is that I'm not asking you to study, prepare anything. I'm asking you to spend your own time to prepare certain content for your own beneficiary, where you attract. Just I gave you an example in a house when a parent even is a, both parents are teachers in KVS, but still the, uh, still the child does not accept them as teachers. In that case, content has to be shared. The content has to be prepared. When something comes, some appreciation comes from outside, then they accept it, right? So what is the need? We can download certain content. We can reuse some of the content from others. As our daily workload increases in our school environment or college environment, we face some time in crunch every day. It's easy to say that find five minutes or 10 minutes for yourself. It's too tough, but still, if you do that, you'll be the best. So why should I do that? What is the content am I talking about? So I should write a content. I should create a content. I should own a content. When you go to the library, if you find a section in your name, won't you be happy? Or when an article is being published in your name, won't you be happy? Similarly, usse 100% aapka happy hoga jab aapka content so low name, millions of people are using it. And you are attending some of the workshops somewhere and somebody puts your article in front of thousand people, won't you be happy? This happens. In, in one of the workshops, one of the teachers was presenting his YouTube channel where he was promoting education. He belongs to some social science category and then he was publishing all his content towards the social media. And all the contents were validated by many of the teachers. He has given it as into a, this five R's. We call it as R framework. Reuse, revise, retain, redistribute, and remix. These are the keywords which gives more fruitful terminologies when we talk about the word called open. When I write a content, I don't want it to stop it. I want others to use it. Plus, they can reuse it we can revise it, the same content what I have written. So that is the objective behind this OER. Wider access to quality contents is given. When I write and publish it, I give more scalability. Scalability means usage. I'm giving more features in. Because normally, when a person uh, after completing uh, college, he used to think about his school days when he applies for civil service. Then only his geography teacher will come into mind. Science teacher will come into mind because when he opens up his books, so that point comes here as scalability. Today, NCRD textbooks are used by even persons who are planning for civil service and any government jobs. The reason, wider scalability, the content that we give, right? Community building and shared ownership. If I write a content, if I keep it myself, will there be any usage for it? Until I get it published, until I get it explored, until I get it shared with the same teacher. Before I publish, I should check with the fellow colleagues. Mostly not from the same school. I know that. We have a difference of opinion. But at least when you come to workshop like this, you find similar subject patterns. <clears throat> you write more. You share among themselves. You correct it. You give appreciation back to him also. And then start creating your own subject-based community where you start sharing your own content. And also, you have to underline here, share the ownership. When, because when you, when you publish a paper in, our, uh, in a journal, we call them as reviewers. 
we call them as editors. We still give them appreciation. Why? Without appreciation, nothing works. So further, the objective last is to, why do you want to share it? Why do you want to have a community? The last point is to enable them to continuously improve it. If you want some, you want to own something, you have to make continuous improvement. So that is the objective behind it, right? So small video. I hope the audio is coming. This video will fetch you an example what a professor is doing and how the content is being shared by him and how it reaches the other parts and what he gets reflect back. So that is a small video of it. A few years ago, a professor taught a climate change course reaching about 100 students per semester. One day he found it. If I could upload this course online, then not only would my 100 students have access to it, but others as well. So be it. And this is what happened. I have sent the portless content across the country to Alex, who was studying climate change. I found it so interesting that he forwarded a copy to his friend Lou in Africa. He was developing peer to peer courses with Philip. So they remixed the content with other research and created a video about the impacts of climate change in Africa. A participant in the course shared the content with Gabby, who was studying environmental policy in Africa. Gabby brought the content to her class, and together, they translated it in Spanish. After that, Gabby's professor shared it his other class. Maria, another student, shared the content with her father, who passed it on to his colleagues. Gabby's professor also forwarded the content to David, a colleague in the UK who was researching climate change. He updated some of the data, adapted it to his study, and published an article in an open journal. Researchers from all over the world were able to read the article. They sent the updated content back to the original professor. By then, his course had reached so many more people than his 100 students. Years later, many schools have followed the exam and opened access to their content. Governments began promoting the use of open textbooks, and students began saving money on books. Other innovative began to open access to the entire course making them available to participants from all around the world. These are open education arenas, teaching, learning, research useful, that can be reused, redistributed, remixed, and revised. Open educational resources are accessible to everyone. Learners, teachers, researchers, parents, workers, citizens, to you. Now, as a public, Everyone has a right to be educated, then only a few have access to school. Open educational resources increase access to quality of and reduce costs by Open educational resources I hope a little bit of information is given to you. What is OER and what is the focus of creating or talking about this OER? Okay. 
ऑनलाइन का आई होप द ऑनलाइन पीपल इज आर ऑल्सो एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड आर लिजन टू माई वर्ड्स ओके विद प्रमोट दैट यू आर लिजनिंग आई एम जस्ट गोइंग हेट I hope the video described the efficiency or the effort taken by a professor and how the content has come back. It's not only laurels; it's more about the knowledge that has been shared and created and utilized then and there. So, one piece of information viewed in different dimensions for different purposes. So that is where we are concentrating on today's lecture: open education, right? it's not only downloading something from others you can even write because most of the brains are thinking in a different way of knowledge fetching right so he is a man behind uh, this oer on which we are talking about today richard barnick because he was the person who initiated this in the year 1999 and currently uh, it has been renamed in the name of uh, open stacks tnx right so that beautiful definition is also given because when we have a formal education we start with the, uh, the definitions behind it what others have said about it and what are the features what are the benefits the flow goes in that way this i have taken up the same way because what unesco has said about oer unesco has said that technology enabled oer is a technology enabled open provision of educational resources for any consultation usage Please underline the word non-commercial purpose. Nothing is commercial. And similarly, there is a OECD. I don't know how many of you know what is OECD. Can you elaborate? Yes, you can. You can find it out. They have also given us the definition as digitalized materials offered freely and openly for educators, students, and self-learners to use and reuse. the teaching learning and research materials so these are some of the definitions i'll quickly run up i will not take much time so oer covers what what are the key features that are coming and what are the content that are coming under oer a few are depicted here online textbooks animations and simulations powerpoints most of you would have had the feeling of downloading some of the ppts from powerpoint sharing there are plenty number of websites because when we study the user analysis more than a lack is there especially teachers because most of the contents are given to teachers as free of cost and here i would like also to tell you that if you are looking for any of these softwares uh, from microsoft products or somebody or google also if you write it for the education purpose they are giving it as free of cost so the eligibility is that only you should be a teacher and you should have a prominent school based identity which means that your email id should focus on to which school you belong so then you will get everything free so that you can further nurture your children with more features so diagrams graphic materials video uh, re recorded lectures and assessment questions so such as tests can also be shared among oer it doesn't restrict again we are going with virtual labs how many of you know about virtual labs and how many of you are using it i know that more many hands will be there when i ask you about virtual labs but i will not find answers but when i see teachers how many of you are really using in your schools so there comes a problem either we blame the society saying that we don't have such environment in our school so how much efficiency are have we taken up in our teachers meeting to raise that because this really gives a solution for any of the child who is on a sick leave when the practical was happening especially this when you uh, look into the website of ncert you can find many uh, experiments virtually done for class 10 9 10 11 12 you can ask your kids ask your students if they missed the classes they need not worry run behind tuition teachers you can ask them to open up diksha and then uh, you can ask them to access the content which is given free of cost especially when the chemistry labs are then when you deal with salts we always afraid that salts gir gaya wo ho gaya in virtual labs you are making them more 100 con 100% confident to use the sulfuric acid for their any practicals 
right so please do concentrate because we need promotion for it as a teacher because giving a good information at the right time is also a good uh, structure of a teacher right so interactive videos <clears throat> this was one of the key books that we have incorporated in the class 3 and class 6 also recently which was launched or released earlier uh, the young children were focused only on uh, the brailleis textbooks that were based on brailleis today we are even giving them with a smart pen twin based tip where the child can just sensitize using a stylus pen when he keeps on any page any corner or any place of the page it reads if image is there if the stylus is kept by the child immediately their picture is getting read by the stylus informing the child that that is happening there is a tree there is are some of the birds sitting there and this is happening this is written in english this is written in your own mother tongue whatever is there it explains the child so like type interactive textbooks are also now available so please make all these things note so that then and there as a teacher whenever you come across such an uh, incidents of uh, uh, kids running behind uh, brailleis you can promote them to them textbooks audio video lectures animations audios collection of journal articles digital images software tools software tool i have already said you that you need not buy anything there is a word called as alternative if you find any alternative for any software in the world you can find it out mostly as far as government of india is concerned as a teacher if you promote open source softwares and if you promote your students also to concentrate on open source software where licensing does not be a problem then it is very easy for us to understand don't worry about all these ppts and videos i'll give it to you for both the online as well as your sessions you can later on use it further so whenever we talk about something we used to have a, a question main kyu isko padhna chahta hu ki hame isko yahan pe hame kyu dikha rahe hain और उसका जरूरत क्या दो चीजें रहते हैं तो इसके लिए मैंने ये पीपीटी बनवाया था एक स्कोप होता है फायदा क्या स्कोप मतलब इसका आगे हम कहा से लेके जा सकते हैं तो नीड मतलब व्हाट इज़ द डिफरेंस बिटवीन स्कोप एंड नीड स्कोप इज फर्दर एनहांसमेंट नीड इज व्हाट फॉर व्हाट पर्पस आई कैन यूज इट राइट सो बेटर लर्निंग आउटकम्स वेन यू यूज ओ आर इन योर क्लास रूम्स यू फाइंड मोर प्रोडक्टिविटी मोर आउटपुट मोर गुड रिसर्च इन एस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द क्लासेस दैट द टाइप ऑफ चिल्ड्रन आई हैव डिस्कस्ड excellent opportunity to learn from high quality notch material when your content gets popularized familiarized quality wise and quantity wise then even in unknown meetings your name will be referred where further an energy will come to you one responsibility will come to you inbuilt so that you start quenching more so that is a excellent opportunity students motivation who can review the material this i have already shared to you you need not take all things on your head you can use certain yeah. kids not of same class different classes can also be taken maybe if you are writing a content for class 6 you can take a child from 7 and 8 because we all know that as a teachers when we teach content, the content is not going to be for that level alone it can be a herd also so in that case you can use students to develop and use it then and there because when you use it at the right time then it reaches in a proper way right it also gives you more recognition provide learners with more improved access to the quality education these are some of the scopes the need is also there wide access is also given more resources to feed available for example i'll tell you if i create one photograph or download any photograph from the internet and i put it in my own facebook account or twitter account immediately you expect something right Why do we post something in our social networking? We want others to learn what we are doing. How many likes? How many comments? Are we not sincerely looking into it? What for we are looking into it? It's not for popularity because we know the people for with whom we are sharing it, right? But still, what is expected? What is expected? They have a they have created an image about you already, right? So that way the need has to be planned. for what purpose we are creating a content for what purpose we are going to share with whom are we going to share many things have to be decided so this i have already learned freedom of oer <clears throat> i already said you it is not 100% compulsory that you prepare your own content 
you can use others content but these five ifs or r's whatever you call it either you create your own content then it is okay but if you don't share it it is waste but if you don't have time to create a content you download a content where you verify the content as you are being verified by others as a teacher you also evaluate the content so what should you do with the downloaded content what should not be done so that is what discussed here there some others how the copy that's what i am coming up that's what i am coming very good very nicely pointed out we have copyrighted but still we will have the option of searching it aapko ye content acha lag gaya to aapko lag raha hai wo student wo student se share karne se aapko kuch acha lagega kyunki aapko share karne se aapko kuch ho nahi hone wala hai but the but the student or the kid for whom you have planned to give it the child can use it then you just no harm to write back to the author saying that sir i find your content very nice i want to share it among my children my kids of this particular classroom can you give us a permission you write a small mail email if you have a, a phone number you contact him or else you look into the pattern of the licensing scheme that i'm going to talk about next 5 10 minutes what pattern has he put up in the content keeping the patent or the code we can understand how we can utilize the content so that is the answer so benefits of oer most of the students are still in a low poverty to learn because expenditure comes as a huge cost so using oer many children can study many new things then it is going to be free of cost but unless or otherwise the children are preached about such availability as a teacher we have to preach them that these are available on free of cost it is up to you to download it either from the library or through your mobile phones because today everybody is having mobile phone right for teachers teachers can also create the content of their own so that they also become professionals in preparations and also they should have in the mind that whatever they do it is only a process of continuous improvement right and also for parents as a parent if you are doing it you find plenty number of opportunity being a teacher if a, if her or his own son comes up to class 12 a question arises which category of college should i go being a teacher being a director of some of the biggest organization he also come to the conclusion main aage isko kya kahan leke jaao kahan admission karao kaun sa course mein karao because you are not updating there right <coughs> we are among available in uh, in india these are the schemes that are available through oers in india that you have to note down swayam is known to you nptel swayam is for all the colleges and the schools ncert is also promoting class 11 and 12 courses through swayam with all the subjects recently it started with economics geography and it goes on like this nptel it's only for the engineering and uh, diploma polytechnic colleges where we are also promoting some of the engineering based courses NCT, you know, it belongs to the teacher community and the teacher trainers community, and it is also sharing some of the content through them. Shod Ganga, the symbol itself uh, symbolizes that it belongs to the UGC uh, scale, and they are giving more content on the research focus. Whereas, all should note down this NDL dot IIT Garakpur dot AC dot in, where you can find n number of textbooks throughout the world, journals, articles, whatever you want to download, you can download it free of cost. because most of the foreign journals are very costly here you can get it of free of cost then when i spoke about india i have to spoke about uh, the ppts will be given back please don't note down because i have to run up in the next 10 minute i am planning to leave you for the lunch because we do have rules here before that if you don't go the lunch will not be available so i have to leave you oer initiative taken by ncert e paachala there we give the textbooks of ncert in the pdf format followed by the epub format you can download or you can interact with the textbooks directly diksha the banyan tree of ncert where all the e contents are being flourished in different methodologies nista of course many of you are through nista here pm e vidya again uh, the channels through 200 channels most of the content are given by every states and also ncert is updating them with uh, regular schedules followed by the ict curriculum and it, these are some of the content right so where should i find some of the content 
I am a science teacher and I am looking about chloro uh, uh, के mathematics arithmetic के बारे में मुझे बच्चों को पढ़ाना है तो मुझे content कहाँ से लेके आना textbook तो है out of textbook मुझे कुछ लेके आना कुछ दिखाना है या तो मैं कुछ content मैंने कुछ assignment लिख लिया या तो कुछ notes लिख लिया बच्चों के लिए तो वो notes को ऊपर कुछ और अच्छा content लेके देना है ऐसी rightly said that मैं किसी और को download करूँगा तो उनका licensing creative commons का problem आएगा तो मैं क्या करूँ so you have to look into that. Kaan se dhoonde? These are the websites where you are able to search the content as per their definitions, usages. Definition means usages. These are some of the searching tools. As a teacher, what teaching and learning process can be integrated into OER? This you have already spoken plenty number of times, which may you can have a glance. I'm skipping many things for your understanding. This is very much important. Challenges of OER, कब हमें problem होते हैं, जब quality और accuracy ठीक नहीं है, then your entire recognition goes wrong. First as a teacher, क्योंकि आजकल बच्चे दो मिनट में पता कर लेते हैं, कि teacher कुछ काम के नहीं, पता नहीं क्या क्या शब्द बोल देते हैं, we get heart attack. It's very serious, right? Maybe in some of the closed schools, it may not be there. But in, when you go to a government school or any school, no, when you start speaking, the way you smile and then when you start, immediately say, you have to So that is when we have to concentrate on quality and accuracy. Require hardware and software technologies for internet access. Because still in India, we are facing this problem. Most of the places are not covered with internet. Most. So in that case, how do we share this content? We are giving them through pen drive. As I think most of you are knowing about Jadu Pitara. Yeah. Yeah. You may see the box yeah. where you come into the NCRT. So we are giving that physically also. It was launched two years back. And now we are giving it to digital pattern in the format of e Jadu Pitara. What we do, we ask the content, we create the content or get the content from the NCRTs. And those have been uh, pushed into the websites of e Jadu Pitara using bots. Any child can listen to a story, any child can listen to a content or any uh, specific need he has, he can write on to it. You can download and see the app later on. So likewise, we are trying to access them, attract the children to learn. Language and cultural views may be a barrier. So that is the biggest point. And this is very serious note that you have to understand. Because whenever you, especially this comes to the concept of history people. History and geography teachers has to make a note of it. Whenever you write something, you should think in this. You are not hurting the language or the cultural use of that particular zone for whom you are writing what content. So that is what I am highlighting here. Lack of physical contact and interactive discussion may hinder a student. Until you explain uh, certain things to a child, he will not do anything. Once will not help you, at least minimum five times. It's our own imposition to ch call a child and explain how to use, what to use, where to use. In spite of this, certain child comes and directly asks us, so when I have the habit of uh, downloading certain content, how serious am I? As he asked me a question. So first thing that we have to observe is the work covered by copyright. Agar yes, bol di, aapka agla question hai. Is your intended use already permitted? I have already said you every content that you have is fixed by some of the licenses. Or a, or a methodology of using it. So we have to study that also. Kis se hai, usko kaisa use kar sakte. Is your intended use in there fair use? Aap kisi ka content use karna chaate hai, aapka dimaag mein wachi taraf se likha hua ki kis tarikhe se usko aage leke jana chaate hai. Aisa nahi hona ki you take it and copyright it and you publish it in your name. Aaj raat ke liye aap kush rahega. Agla din to aapko memo a jayega. Very seriously. And that too, if you write in social media, forget about the days. Right? So that is why we have to think before doing anything in the social media. All social media websites are filled with 365. I don't know how many of you know this. We call it as 360 camera. So keep that in your mind. So if your usage is not properly defined by you, please don't copy or download anything. Even if you download it, don't paraphrase it. Today's crime of using artificial intelligence is that because artificial intelligence promotes us to paraphrase immediately. I don't know how many of you use the word called grammarly.com. I'm so saying grammar barely use for them. 
खुद का कंटेंट अपलोड करके आप दो मिनट में नहीं होगा आपका कंटेंट उनका डेटाबेस में गया तो कोई भी यूज कर सकते हैं या तो आप जितना आप उसमें पैराफ्रेस आपका खुद का कंटेंट करेंगे वो सारे सैंपल्स बन के उनका स्टोरेज में स्टोर हो जाते हैं स्नो थिंक अबाउट दिस वाई वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल दिस थिंग्स यू कैन सी इन द राइट राइट साइड यू कैन से यू आर नॉट फॉलोइंग एथिक्स यू हैव टू बी लीगली फेस्ड राइट IP plays a vital role. What is IP? Intellectual property. Because when I ask this IP, this is for purposefully given. Because most of the computer science people, internet protocol, बोल देते हैं. So उनको कम थोड़ा सा mute करने के लिए यहाँ पे IP लिखा होगा. So most of the things are planned. So what is a patent? Small spark in the mind, small idea, small innovation. As soon as it comes out, you search in your searching tools if something is existing in the world. Okay. and again you have to see minutely what methodology they have used ideas may be same but when you keenly look into the ideas you find the methodology what way he is he using if he is writing 10 papers for the methodology you write a paragraph then you become genius right so instead of leaving it there immediately try to file it up as a patent as your idea you become the owner of the idea there are many types of patents here one Is like getting money for it for your idea. If somebody is going to use it, or else put it in your uh, name itself in a non-commercial. So the idea that comes into a patent, trade secrets. What is trade secret? <coughs> What is the difference between Maruti and Tata? Trade secret only the design of the car. Design of the car is the trade secret. What is the trademark here? Very nicely said. Copyright. So see what are all I'm talking about. What are all displayed here talks about the knowledge. Knowledge. You take everything. All talks about the content. Patent is also a content. Trade secret also is a document. Trademark is also a document. Copyright is also about the content that you have written, published it somebody else, and even an order given to you by your higher authority that also comes into the last category, confidential information. How many of us keep it confidential? Because before we get our office gets it, right? We ourselves do not know what is happening. Bad me ho ke either the give us congratulation or give us a pat on the back, right? So what is there? The definition I have given it. I am skipping this. You can see it later on because these are all basic definitions. This core differentiation, so you all know this. If you are able to identify what is the copyright, what is the reserved, what is the trademark. What is the copyright? All three belongs to the legal category. If you find is there these types of symbols, you should be very careful in handling it. Either we should neglect them, or else if you predominantly say that no, no, मुझे वो चाहिए, मुझे वो ही use करना है, then you go in detail and look into their legal usage because every legal says two ways: either how to use it or not to use it. So read it and get a clarification. So, what are the works that are com coming under the category of copyrights is given to your information based on uh, the categories like literacy, democratic, sorry, uh, dramatic, sound recording, cinematography, musical systems, and artistics. Each category has their own copyrights. So, how do you en encounter when you go for education? When you talk about the properties, how to analyze, right? When we take up curriculum textbooks, we should be very careful. We are teaching CBSE. Then it doesn't need that. When I write a content, that should not get matched with Gujarat board or Odisha board or Tamil Nadu board, whatever it is. We should always have a compass because we should have a wide open because we are talking about open education resources, right? We write a small component and then we have to analyze it. If you don't do it, then it is waste. What are the hindrance accesses? That's why I said you. expensive we want to cut down the cost it's not only the child it's also for the teachers right we should always do all these things for what the second point rebuilding the way what is there in the way normally when we say when we ask somebody to write in a even workshop this is so already padha hua usko kya likhu already padha hai but that was written in 1996 you are writing in 9, uh, 2024 The variation, the slang, the need of the society changes, and as per our education policy, we should revise every three years or five years the content. 
the flow because the generation changes earlier when we were in the school we only think about the teachers who used to have a cane the rest of the teachers are jolly teachers today the teacher who carry, carries a tab into the classroom are smart teachers the teachers who carry handbags are always teachers that is what the generation is teaching us right when we go to schools we interact with them they are giving these things right so what is restricted access to quality should not be there so that is another uh, hindrance demand based price controlling is also there right so the fair usage is also given for your information just i spoke about this now coming to the point how do we get these access we call them it as licenses what is licenses permissions what is permissions as he said i want to download a content where i have to find out the limitations of using it then we can look into it and find it out so how do you do it using the last keyword which you called as creative commons so i am taking you to a final single slide before that you should define this there are four components that you should keep in your mind whenever you look into the content the four are given in the keywords by nc nd and sa by attribution required what is my attribution we have to respect value to the person who has created it yeah we need appreciation waking up in the morning if you say good morning to all of your all your family will look into you like this pata nahi aaj kya ho gaya if you do it regularly right so attribution is required if somebody does a small help us you say thank you immediately say kuch ho gaya isko attribution is required appreciation is required then when you say appreciation when you say a good morning even if you don't ask for a coffee immediately coffee will come to you so that likewise whatever content we need we should always think as a teacher it should not be commercially used we should never let it unless or otherwise you are talking about patent because there are certain patents where we design something we fix, fix it as a design patent where if somebody some corporate is going to use the same design then we need money because they are going to use the design and publish it and they are going to sell and make a car and sell it somewhere else in a product right so you have to think, and see nd <clears throat> what is nd no derivative works whenever we talk about designs whenever we talk about engineering devices or any electronic devices or even any mathematical formulas we should always see to that nobody further derives anything from my own work or our own work if somebody wants to do it let them get permission from me maine bahut mushkil se ek formula derive kiya e is equal to mc square to uska aage aap y laga ke y equal to e mc square aap karna chahte hain to galat hai because for achieving the word e is equal to the theory is different the formula is the policies are different so you should not steal somebody's derived work so that's the point here but the last category is essay share alike you are being given with permission aapko jo bhi karna hai karo mujhe koi problem nahi so these four are the primary i will uh, directly take you to the last page yeah, this is the holy page where i have defined all the four the first one if you don't find the c first c then it comes into the name called as public domain public domain means share alike share alike option can also be selected here so when i say about public domain you see the parallel flows there you can copy and publish attribution is not required you can even sell my idea you can also modify and adapt and also you can find a change in license so when you are downloading a content from the internet see to that the content which you download comes under which category if you find this logos then you can come to the conclusion and think about further usage of that particular content so that is so important here the second one cc by by what is by attribution compulsory hai usme wo baaki sare mana nahi kar rahe aap reuse kar sakte hain remix kar sakte hain redistribute kar sakte hain ya uska license bhi change kar sakte hain right the third is cc by sa अट्रीब्यूशन भी चाहिए बाद में आप कुछ भी कर लो उसको फोर्थ वन सी सी बाई एंड एनडी एनडी मीन्स नो फर्दर डेरिवेटिव 
मेरा नाम मेरा कंटेंट को आपको यूज करना यूज कर लो कोई बात नहीं मेरा नाम यूज कर लो बट आगे से उसको एक्सपेंड मत करो नेक्स्ट एनसी मतलब नॉट फॉर कमर्शियल पर्पस अगेन लास्ट से बिफोर वाला कौन सा है सीसी बाई क्रिएटिव कॉमन सीसी मीन्स क्रिएटिव कॉमन बी वाई मीन्स अट्रीब्यूशन इज रिक्वायर्ड एनसी मीन्स नॉट फॉर कमर्शियल पर्पज यूज नहीं करना है बट जैसा मर्जी कैसा कर लो मतलब शेयर लाइक द लास्ट वन सो दिस इज द होली ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग सो हाउ डू वी डाउनलोड हाउ डू वी एक्सेस दिस आर द प्लेटफॉर्म यूसिंग विच यू कैन सर्च यूर कंटेंट क्रिएटिव कॉमेंट्स क्या होते हैं कहां से मैं ढूंढू दिस आर सम एजेंट्स राइट आई एम लिविंग यू दंटेंट प्लीज डोंट वरी एंड हम बिफोर यू लिव आई वीडियो वेर इट विल हेल्प यू टू सर्च विद सो मेनी न्यू टूल्स एंड वेज टू यूज टेक्नोलॉजी ओपन एजुकेशनल रिसोर्सेज और ओ वी आर हैव बिकम एन इंपॉर्टेंट सप्लाई फ्रॉम विच टू ड्रॉ वेन डेवलपिंग इंस्ट्रक्शनल कॉन्टेंट ओ वी आर आर एजुकेशनल मटीरियल प्रोड्यूस बाय वन पार्टी दैट आर लाइसेंस टू बी शेयर फ्रीली एंड एट नो कॉस्ट बाय अदर्स Let's examine the process of finding and using OER and how to handle the complications that can arise when combining materials with different licenses. There are many open licenses, but Creative Commons licenses are the ones we will be working with here. So how do you go about finding and using OER? Let's watch Michelle as she develops a chapter for an open textbook on metabolism. Michelle has been teaching metabolism for years, so she has already developed the text of the chapter from her notes. But she needs some illustrations, specifically of the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. She'd also like to find some exercises to accompany the text. There are many places to find OER, such as Flickr CC, OER Commons, Connections, Internet Archive, or Open Michigan. Michelle goes to Flickr CC at flickr.com slash creative commons. That brings her to a collection of all the Flickr images that have creative commons licenses. She quickly finds the images she's looking for. Both with CC by licenses. For exercises, she logs into the Orange Grove, Florida's digital repository where a wide range of OER are available. Here she searches for electron transport chain and turns up some exercise test questions also licensed CC by. Because there are no restrictions on these images or exercises, Michelle is free to modify them to suit her need. She resizes and crops the images and writes captions to them. Then for each image, she provides the specific Creative Commons license with a link back to its license deed. Next, she writes the creator's name, linking back to the Flickr site where she found the image. She also adds some references to the images in her text. She then adds the exercises at the end, removes two that do not belong in her chapter, provides attribution to the creator, and links back to the resource. Then she uses the accessibility checker utility in Microsoft Word, which spots content that may pose challenges for persons with disabilities. When Michelle saves her book, she notices the metadata text fields at the bottom of the Save As window. Her name is already listed as author. She could add more names if she had co-authors. She enters the title and subject, then several tags that describe the content of her work. When Michelle clicks save, the metadata is embedded in the document. Finally, she adds a Creative Commons license. Because the other content she is using has CC BY licenses, the least restrictive license available, she is free to choose the license she wants. She goes to the Creative Commons page to choose a license. 
She answers a few questions and her license is selected automatically. She then fills in some information to help others provide proper attribution for her work and the chooser automatically generates text and code for her document. She copies the text and pastes it onto the first page of her chapter. A job well done, Michelle. Thanks. I hope uh, a little bit of information is given to you. How to search, how to identify the creative license that for which content you have downloaded. And the third, you are going to incorporate it because in the first two images, the first was free. The second was has the option of changing and modifying it. So she modified it. And you come across a word called as metadata. What is metadata? Data about data, but in the image, what is happening? Because we are hiding some of the content to know the originality of the image also, to find out who has created the information in the image. For example, this is why we have used to say that whenever you download any image from the internet, please see to that what metadata is hidden into it. Otherwise, you have to face the illegal actions on it, right? Finally, she completes her notes with the CC. So this is how as a teacher you should to the society. Thank you. So on behalf of all participants, I take time to thank Dr. Radish for taking this session. I hope like you have learned something from this session of newly on the licenses. Your lunches. Uh...